It's official. Roe v. Wade has been overturned by the Supreme Court. So for the first time in the history of the Supreme Court, they have taken away a fundamental constitutional right. This is unprecedented, and this is a very dark day in American history because we are losing a fundamental constitutional right that we've had for 50 years. For a lot of people, this is all that we've known. I've only lived in a world where abortion is safe and legal in this country. But now that changes immediately. So as Politico reports, the Supreme Court on Friday revoked the constitutional right to an abortion that has been in place for half a century, overturning Roe v. Wade on a five to four vote, clearing the way for dozens of states to swiftly ban the procedure and throwing the country into uncharted political, legal, social and medical territory. The majority opinion authored by Justice Samuel Alito hewed closely to the draft version obtained exclusively by Politico and published in early May. In its official opinion, the court's conservative majority went beyond simply resolving the case before them, Mississippi's near ban on abortion at 15 weeks of pregnancy, and instead overturned both Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, long-standing precedents that barred states from banning abortion before the point of fetal viability. Now we'll get to the dissenting opinion from the liberal justices here in a moment, but for a second, I just want you to stop and cherish this moment that we're in right now, because as bad as it may seem, one, two, three years from now, it is going to get even worse. We will have even less rights. So as bad as it is right now, this is only the beginning, and the right is broadcasting their intent to go even further. For example, former Vice President Mike Pence celebrated this news, saying, Today life won, and he called for a total ban on abortion in all 50 states. And abortion is not the only civil right that's under threat, because as Politico continues, and while Alito's opinion insisted that overturning Roe and Casey endangered no rights guaranteed by other past court decisions, Justice Clarence Thomas's view of what that assurance meant seemed certain to fuel fears that rulings many Americans rely on could be next on the chopping block. Quote, in future cases, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergfell. Thomas wrote in a solo concurrence referring to a 1965 decision finding a right to contraception for married couples, a 2003 decision that overturned criminal sodomy laws, and a 2015 decision requiring states to recognize same-sex marriages. Quote, we have a duty to correct the error established in those precedents. So Justice Clarence Thomas makes it abundantly clear that this is only the beginning. He's saying in his concurring opinion that we should not just ban gay marriages, not just ban contraception, but also ban sodomy once again. So they're trying to make being gay, gay intimacy, illegal in the United States. So if you are a married couple, two, three years from now, it's not just the case that your marriage might be invalidated, but you being in a gay relationship might be deemed illegal. That's where we're at in the United States once again. Now, the liberal justices warned that this would be the case in their dissenting opinion, writing, withdrawing a woman's right to choose whether to continue a pregnancy does not mean that no choice is being made. It means that a majority of today's court has wrenched this choice from women and given it to the states, the Democratic-appointed justices wrote. Women have relied on Roe and Casey in this way for 50 years. Many have never known anything else. When Roe and Casey disappear, the loss of power, control, and dignity will be immense. The court's liberals also also predicted that the Republican appointed majority's willingness to override a nearly half century old precedent bodes ill for other decisions regularly relied upon by Americans and for respect for the legal system. Quote, it makes the court appear not restrained, but aggressive, not modest, but grasping. In all those ways, today's decision takes aim. We fear at the rule of law, Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan wrote. Yeah, and they're absolutely correct about that. The court has zero legitimacy. We should not recognize this court. They are a rogue institution trying to impose this minoritarian Christian nationalist view on every single member of society, even if we don't want them to do this, even if these decisions are overwhelmingly unpopular. Now, what you are going to expect, or what you should expect, rather, over the weekend, is a trickle of headlines of states, one by one, banning abortion. For example, news anchor Hunter Hoagland of Arkansas reports, Planned Parenthood of Little Rock confirms all scheduled abortions have been canceled. So this ruling is having an immediate effect. Women who had their abortions scheduled are no longer able to get them in many states. 
Now, at the time that I record this, there's people protesting in D.C., but there's nothing too significant at the moment. I'm expecting that to change. But regardless, even if there's not really a huge presence there yet, riot police have shown up presumably to intimidate protesters. And I just want everyone to make a mental note of the fact that cops are more prepared to contain legitimate protests from angry citizens than they were to contain the January 6th insurrection where thousands of fascists stormed the Capitol in an effort to end democracy. Remember, Remember, these cops are not there to protect you. They are there explicitly to protect property and elites. Your civil rights, your safety is not of their concern whatsoever. Period. Full stop. You need to get that through your head if you haven't acknowledged this yet. Now, the Democratic Party has responded and somehow they've managed to take a serious situation and reassure no one and offer a more unhinged response than usual. Biden predictably decided to pen a strongly worded letter in the form of a tweet saying this fall, we must elect more senators and representatives who will codify a woman's right to choose into federal law. We need to elect more state leaders to protect this right at the local level. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. Now you're probably reasonably thinking, but wait, Biden, you're the president right now, and you're almost certainly going to lose power in November, so why wouldn't you fight right now? Are you seriously telling us that we have to elect more people in order for you to begin fighting for us when we already put you in office? And the answer is yes. He's saying they're not going to fight. But his response literally was more reasonable than the House Democratic Party's response, because Nancy Pelosi decided to read a poem, and also on the Capitol steps, House Democrats saying... God bless America. I mean, this is genuinely the most bizarre thing that I've seen. And this is, let me remind you, the response from the only opposition party that we have who's in power who can stop these fascists. But this is what they're doing. I am personally overwhelmed by this decision. From time to time, I quote this poem by Ehud Manor. He's an Israeli poet. I met his wife when I've been in Israel. He says, I have no other country, even though my land is burning. Only a word in Hebrew penetrates my veins, my soul, with an aching body and with a hungry heart. Here is my home. I will not be silent, for my country has changed her face. My country has changed her face. I shall not give up on her. I shall remind her and sing into her ears until she opens her eyes. Clearly, we hope that the Supreme Court would open its eyes. The night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. It's like we're living in the twilight zone. They're singing on the Capitol steps. What are you doing? And uh, I just got to remind you, this comes after members of the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, James Clyburn, all campaigned for Henry Cuellar, an anti-choice Democrat over the pro-choice Democratic woman. But now they're pretending to be concerned about a woman's right to choose going away. Well, Henry Cuellar, in the event they win a majority in November, which they will not, but he could be the vote that stops them from codifying Roe. And they're sitting here singing to us, reading poems. This is who we have to rely on to fight for us. Do you understand why Americans feel no hope whatsoever? Because if that's our opposition, these unhinged geriatrics, they're the ones who's supposed to protect us from the fascists who have broadcasted to us that they're going to take away our rights, then we are fucking truly doomed as a country. We are doomed because look at how weak and comically pathetic these Democrats are. It's outrageous. It is outrageous, honestly, but this is what we've come to expect. The Republicans are saying we want to take away more rights and Democrats are singing, reading poems. <laughs> I can't help but laugh because that's that's the state of politics. It's almost like a parody movie. But no, this is real life. Now, the Democratic Party also tweeted that the basic right to privacy is on the ballot, and also the stakes of this midterm election are even higher now. Translation, we're not going to fight for you right now. If you want us to fight for you, well, maybe you increase our majority. Every single poll indicates that they're going to get wiped out. So a Democratic Party who cared would fight 
right now. Not wait, not fundraise off of this, but use what little power you have left to fight right now. Codify Roe, right now. And if Congress isn't going to accomplish anything, Joe Biden needs to start nominating new Supreme Court justices. There's nothing in the Constitution stopping him from doing this because Republicans packed the Supreme Court. So Biden can make the case to the American people that he's just unpacking the court and rebalancing the court to restore this rogue court back to the American people who don't like what this far right extremist court who is illegitimate is doing. But they're not going to do that. They're just going to say, man, I hope you vote for us. And then maybe we'll begin to fight uh, if you give us a bigger majority. There's just, there's no hope. I'm sorry, but there's no hope. I don't mean to be doomer, but this is who we have. They're the one opposition party to the fascists. Fascists know exactly what they want to do. They have their plan outlined. But Democrats, they're singing. Unbelievable. Now, I want to get to some reactions here. Lindsay Boylan tweets, a court that does not recognize the full human rights of women is not a legitimate court. Couldn't agree more. Walker Bragman writes, with this decision that flagrantly flies in the face of public opinion, the United States Supreme Court has likely permanently tarnished its credibility as an apolitical legal body. Tiffany Jackson writes, forced birth in a country that doesn't have mandatory maternity leave or universal health care. Yeah. Jessica Corey offers some advice. Delete your period tracking apps today. That is really important advice because I would not trust these tech companies with your information about your period. This could be used against you if you live in a red state or pretty soon a blue state, assuming they're able to enact their full ban on abortion. And if you are a gay couple in the United States, if you're a queer person in general, get your birth certificate, get a passport, because we don't know how bad it's going to get. But don't be caught off guard. They're trying. They're, they're broadcasting that they want to make being gay illegal. So if you are in a loving gay relationship in a red state currently, they soon could prosecute you. That's where we're at. So don't wait until it's too late. Get all of your documents ready. Be prepared to seek asylum in a different country because they could be coming for you. And that's where we're at as a country. That's where we're at. I have to tell you this because I want you to be prepared. We're not there yet, but they've broadcasted what they want to do. And you have to be ready to flee in the event it comes to that. So this is one of the darkest days in American history and the most horrifying thought about this moment right now is that this is only the beginning this is just the tip of the iceberg it's going to get a lot worse in the next five to ten years